major Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. And we're back. We had Aliyah Hawil on numerous times over the last couple of years. He first came to us when we dubbed him the Lebanese Hassan. He married a Syrian young lady from Brooklyn, and they discovered that he wasn't Jewish, and he was separated. Then discovered he was Jewish, but he went through a conversion to Humra. He's accepted by the Israeli rabbinate, and now well, he's talking about his experience in Lebanon because that's where he grew up, even though he wasn't a religious Shiite, but he grew up in a Shiite household, a Shiite neighborhood. In fact, he recently saw one of the uh, people that he, one of the people he recognized was killed as a Hezbollah terrorist. But he was killed, that was killed by Israeli forces. But we're going to be looking at the Hezbollah influence on the educational. So even if you're not a Hezbollah, we'll talk about how they've shaped opinion and the same lessons would hold through for Hamas and Gaza. So Shavua Tov, thank you for joining us. Shavua Tov, Zef, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. So you grew up in Lebanon. You went, what was it, a religious school? It was a regular school? Describe to us. What, what it, was, it wasn't a, re a religious school. It was a mixed school. But um, since South Lebanon is mostly dominated by the Shia community, it was just logical that the majority of the people in that school were from the, Sh for, were from the Shia sect of Islam. Um, and it was since the Shia sect of Islam is the is the Islamic sect that dominates Hezbollah. It was logical that many of the people who were in that school were also supporters of Hezbollah, including uh, including some of the teachers themselves. Um, yeah. And they were identified as a teacher as people who were affiliated with Hezbollah. You knew not that really, not, not necessarily identified as members, but they supported the ideology. Right, they promoted the ideology, and I, and I have to say, it's it's one of it's one of the parameters of the powerful propaganda machine that Hezbollah has all over Lebanon. It's propaganda plus intimidation at its best. So, explain to me what that means. What do they teach you and the other young people in the classroom? Like, for instance, um, I'm not sure if I told you this story on a, on a previous interview, but one of the main things that led me into looking into Torah and looking into the Beit HaMikdash was, uh, was a question that I asked one of my civil education teachers. And I said, we, we were going over a history chapter over the, uh, the Phoenician civilization. And one of the paragraphs in the chapter said uh, that uh, Shlom, the Phoenicians were so good at architecture that Shlomo HaMelech asked them to help him build the Beit HaMikdash by build, bringing Agzea Lebanon. So I raised my hand and I said, how come you people here say that there is no Beit HaMikdash, that the Jews are lying when the actual history book printed by the Lebanese government says there's a Beit HaMikdash? And he tells me, he gets, he gets like nervous and he, then he tells me, I have no time for your stupid questions. The same exact teacher himself was giving a few lectures after was was talking for one, one and a half hours straight about how every single problem in the world is caused by Jews, how the Rothschilds control the world, how uh, how Israel is poisoning America and poisoning the Middle East, how they, they they've been trading. Go I'm like it, it, things that were so ridiculous that they, it, for a brain that has common sense, it just doesn't it, it doesn't click. But the South is dominated by Hezbollah. They have control, and I think the Lebanese government is afraid of them. So this is part of the education where they taught mm -hmm. about that. Did they talk about killing Jews? Yes, they do. They, they talk about it very proudly, very, very proudly. They, they celebrate it on the streets. It's the same exact. Uh, crap that you see in Gaza right now, with with them with them with them celebrating the massacre that happened two weeks ago. The same thing happens in Lebanon. Same exact thing. They celebrate the death of Jews, yet they still call themselves the victim. And I assume that nobody challenges them in the classroom. Everybody just absorbs what they're hearing. Zev, Zev, if you open your mouth against them, you're finished. Right. Now I'm not the type of person who who's a people pleaser. I'm not the I'm not the type of person to go with the flow. I'm I'm I've been known as as I was growing up, I've been known to have a rebel personality. Right? I rebelled against this. I I slowly patrol, you know, in steps because I couldn't just jump all in one. You know, 
I slowly but surely, I explained where I, I was coming from. I explained that I was a follower of Judaism. I explained that I'm a supporter of Israel. Slowly but surely, and I rebelled against. At that moment, you, you said know, you know, you know it's, it's Yad Hashem that protected me. No, you said you were a follower of Judaism. Yeah, I did. I, I, I told you. I, 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 you if you if you were. If I remember you were, about you made a yarmulke that you made. I did. Stuff. I did that yarmulke. That yarmulke that I put on top of my head and I walked. Uh, I walked with on the street and I got spat on. I got threatened. That first guy. That first guy that died. Uh, that died. Uh, when was it? Like it was like two days, two or three days after the war started. Since he died, the first the first Hezbollah guy that just died like almost two weeks ago was killed by the IDF. That was one of the people that bullied me in the street. He was he he was one of my neighbors. He and lived he two Hezbollah houses fighter. down, and he became his Hezbollah fighter. He, I, I, yeah. I don't I don't know whether he became whether he already was, but he used to stop me on the street and threaten me. He's like, oh, I heard you're uh, you know you're, you're you, they call you the Jew now. They call you, you you love America, you love Israel. Be careful. I can take you. We can take down your whole family. Uh, we can prevent you from traveling. We can do this. I, I knew who was bluffing. You know, I, I, I you know I'm I'm I've seen these people. I've seen these these people, and I've experienced uh, you know see, seeing their crap enough to know that to know that they bluff. They're full of crap. But they're but they but they actually do killings. I'm mean, look at what his bow. They do listen. Oh, they do, listen. They do killings. They're extremely dangerous. However. Um, most of their strength and i'm and i compare them in that regard to the to the nazis right hitler's power came from his propaganda machine right um he was able to brainwash people in the public he was he was able to convince them that he was the most undefeated defeatable power in the world and this is what hezbollah does you know they're, they are powerful, but they over-exaggerate their power. Right now, in the mind, in the brain of a normal southern Lebanese Shia Muslim, they're convinced that they are destined for the ultimate victory in a final battle against Israel, and they have their own version of the Mashiach, who's going to appear and, and is, and is going to finish uh, with 313 soldiers. That guy who died from Hezbollah, that my neighbor, he literally one time stopped me in the street and said, he's like, do you know that in the end of days, we have 313 soldiers who are going to fight with the, uh, they are the army of the Mahdi. This is the name of their Messiah, Mashiach. And he's like, um, and, and, and the Mossad knows about this and they're already preparing plans to fight against. And I'm like, uh, are you, are you kidding me? Like some, someone knows that something something's going to happen in the end of days and preparing something in Olam Azeh to fight in, in Olam Aba, like it, 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 it doesn't hop, it, it doesn't register in, the, in a normal brain. So, <clears throat> but I think isn't there a hadith, a teaching, which is of the of Muhammad, which talks about the end of days where the Jews are going to hide behind. Yeah. Oh the my gosh. Yeah. This, this, Jews, right? this, is, this is this is this is where the comic. This is where the comedy comes in. Um, he has he has this uh, hadith about the end of days. He says that in the final in the final battle, um, Jews and Muslims will fight against each other, right? And and then. Uh, Zev, I can't hear you. Go ahead. I wasn't talking. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. He, he says the Jews and Muslims will fight against each other, and then the Jews will hide behind trees and stones, and all the trees and stones will start screaming, "Oh dear Muslim, there's a Jew behind me! Come and kill him!" As if entire nature, as if ent entire God's existence and nature is is going to start warning the Muslims against the Jews. But he's but they say that there's one type of trees that uh, that that will not warn the muslims about the jews and that's the eucalyptus tree and they say that oh because of that israel is planting a lot of eucalyptus trees right now because uh, they, they want to prepare for the end of days ridiculous ridiculous crap Rid ridiculous things that are you know it, it sounds ridiculous e even to the youngest of us it's 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 not even it, it's it's like fantasy they live these people live in pure fantasy well, obviously, a lot of them believe it, including your neighbor who was killed in battle. They believe oh. that's the thing. They, it's it's pure fantasy, like to the eye of the observer. To them, they believe it, but to the eye of an external observer, as me observing them right now, it's it's pure. You know, it's pure fantasy. Oh, you, have, you have you have the 
value of time and distance. You're not there. You you see a different world. But those that are in South Lebanon, even when I was there, even when I was there, I had the brain to think and say, you know, it's it, what they're saying and what they believe in is ridiculous. But you didn't say that in the classroom. Slowly but surely, from the classroom, out of the classroom, on the streets, wearing a kippah, getting threatened, you know, nothing scared me. You know, Yad Hashem was protecting me. But were you ever beaten up for... Yes, I was, yeah. Tell us about that. What happened? You know, they gathered around me in a group. They're like, oh, you're the Jew? You're the one who's, uh, who wants to travel to America and come back and kill, uh, you know, kill the Shia and, 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 and help Israel against us? I'm like, what do you want from me? They're like, oh, we're going to show what, what, what we want from you. And they smacked me in the stomach. I was scared to even tell my mom about it. And did because, that... I, because I knew my mom was going to scream at me and say, oh, stop saying these things, you know, protect yourself, you know, uh, was not going to let me go outside the house anymore. But, you know, nothing, nothing was, uh, nothing, scared, nothing scared me to do what I was doing on the streets. And did any of the school officials or teachers tell your parents? Of what you were doing in the classroom was saying these blasphemous oh yeah things. oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah one th one time i remember i came back from school um so if you remember in 2008 uh the mossad assassinated one of one of the one of the heads of uh, like leading heads of hezbollah his name was imad Murnia, right and then in 2014 his i think it was two th early late 2014 or early 2015 i don't remember the exact date but his son was killed in syria with an israeli airstrike and i went to school and i was celebrate i was literally celebrating that i went to my civil there was another civil education teacher um she was she was a female um this was senior year of high school and i was saying oh did you uh, did you see what happened don't mess don't mess with jews this uh, when you mess with jews this is what happens with you and I remember to, I used the word we. I said, we're going to come after you guys one by one and take you down. And at that point, um, you know, the word was spreading around that, oh, uh, he's uh, he's the supporter of Israel. He's the traitor. He's the Amil. He's the he's this. He's in that. And then a few days after, Hezbollah launches a uh, what they called it, a retaliation strike. They, they fired a few Cornet missiles, God knows where. And they claimed that they killed that they killed ten IDF soldiers, and I go and I go back home that day, and I see people waiting for me at the entrance of uh, of the of the building of my 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 family's building, and they're like, oh, if you don't stop, if uh, we just spoke with your mom, and if you don't stop talking about these things, if if you don't stop uh, involving yourself with the Zionist, if you don't if you don't stop saying that you're Jewish, we're gonna do this this and that to you. And again, I knew they were bluffing. I wasn't scared. Well, I mean, you, they beat you up. So, how do you know, what do you mean that you don't know if they were bluffing or not? You actually had a beating. Listen, it's I'll tell you. I'll stuff. tell you. I'll tell you something. They, I, they, they beat me up, right? They beat me up once, smacked me on the stomach, right? But I don't think I did. I never thought that they ever had any chutzpah to actually kill me. Because, you know, uh huh? Because why didn't you worry that? Because they were... because they would because they would get because here's the thing. Um. I don't know. Maybe 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 it was just a, just a feeling on the inside, but I don't know. I really I really don't know how to answer this question. Okay, because obviously there were all there are no Jews where you were in South Lebanon, right? That's there were no no. Right. So if you're taking on that persona, you're the enemy, so to speak. So that's why, and and they have no compunction I'm, killing Jews. I'm, I'm, done I, it. I I I can I can tell you till this day. I do not know how I got out of Lebanon alive. I really don't know. And you left in what, 2015? 2000, September 21st, 2015 was when I landed in America. Yeah. And what have your family wanted to move out of Lebanon? No, yeah, no. Yeah, for, for a long time, yeah. So, but did your parents share your convictions at all? My mom, my dad not. My my dad was my, my my dad was ashamed. They're like, "Oh, you're embarrassing me! Oh, people are saying your son is a Jew. Your son is this. Your son." I didn't even care. He tried to stop me so many times. Even here in America, he's like, "Stop embarrassing me! You're embarrassing me in front of my cousins because his his cousins lived near nearby us in Houston." I don't care. Leave me alone. <laughs> what are you What are you gonna do? You know. Now you're. It was discovered. You didn't know this when you were in Lebanon, but in subsequent programs. Uh, you found out you were Jewish, that your mother was Jewish and your grandmother was Jewish. Mm -hmm. and, and did your mother, you, she never told you she was Jewish, but did you know that or did you sense anything from her when you were in Lebanon? 
Any sympathy um, points, Jews? There were there were a few hints thrown around, you know, like pe pe people throwing words around to my grandma. Oh, like uh, I'll tell you something. In Lebanon, using the word Jew, they they use it as a curse. They use it as an insult, right? So I hear he, um, I I hear words here and there of people telling my grandma, oh oh, you're the, you're the one who comes from Jews. You're the one who's this. You're the one who's that. And you know, my, my, she 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 doesn't she doesn't hide it. She's she's not the type of person to hide it, you know. But she she shuts them down. She's like, oh, stop stop talking about it. It's not something that we talk about. This was a long time ago. This was my grandma's response. So these these are the few hints that I got. Now, the actual you know sequential going back of grandma to grandma to grandma to grandma to grandma to the, uh, the tracing it back to the original great great grandmother who came from Aleppo and settled in Lebanon I did not have all these names these these were the things that we established uh, about a year and a half ago right I knew Rabbi Avram Reich who's on this yeah. program and uh, he established that and then the court of Jewish law uh, established that now your grandmother uh, is still living in Lebanon mm -hmm. yeah and has there been any repercussions when you've made headlines around the world as being a Jewish and being a supporter of Israel? Has it had any repercussions to your family in Lebanon? Surprisingly not. And surprisingly, my grandma is proud of me. My grandma is on my side and my grandma believes in me. Even though her, it's 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 a great threat to her. And it's a great threat to, to my aunt who, live, who also still lives there. But But she's living a Muslim lifestyle. No, no, secular. But no. but she considers herself Muslim as far as public public is concerned. I mean, as 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 I mean, as the public is concerned, they see her as Muslim. Yeah, her she's non-practicing. If you ask her what are you, she says, "Yeah, you know, I'm uh, I'm you know I'm Lebanese. I'm uh, you know I'm I'm part Arab." And she says, "I'm part Jewish." You know, she knows she, to her she doesn't hop the halachic definition of what a jew is to her oh i have a jewish ancestor so i'm i'm ethnically jewish in her head because she wasn't taught halacha she doesn't know that that makes her halachically jewish in her head it's just it's the ethnic part it's the ethnic definition where's Megalia hawila he is what we dubbed the lebanese Hassan. Uh, he discovered he was jewish uh, but he grew up uh, in a shiite environment in south southern lebanon and we're exploring what uh, he's gone through. What other experience can you share with us from South Lebanon? Um, just at the entrance of the city of Tzor in Lebanon, and many of the towns in the suburbs of the city of Tzor, you start seeing the remarks, you, you, you start seeing the, how do I say it, the manifestations of the powerful propaganda machine that Hezbollah has in Lebanon, right? It 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 it's on the streets, it's in the schools, it's uh it's on TV, it's on radio shows, it's in their it's in their speeches. On Friday, right? I'd be sitting in my room doing homework, and then there's outside there's a huge speaker out of the mosque just blasting blasting sometimes speeches that are in support of Hezbollah. That's how powerful their propaganda machine is. And if you come out and say one word against anything that they do, you're accused of being a spy, you're accused of being collaborator, you're now you're now blacklisted. People people start shaming you in the street. I mean, I mean for me like they stop me in the street they come oh yeah yeah yahudi you know, you Jew. I'm like they think they're cursing me, but in my head like they're calling me Jew and I'm like okay fine, thank you. Like yeah so what like jew what like like, like like make your point they think they're cursing me but it, but, but yeah this the, the, these are these are some of the things that i witnessed here's an email question are you willing to share what's going on in your personal life right now um i'm right now i'm here in america in the process of aliyah and uh, trying to find you do that's all <laughs> right and that's partial the connection where i know when you had the syrian uh lady that you married you got together for a while you gave her a divorce and it's now over completely yeah it's over completely yeah ali hawil is our guest uh, lebanese Hassan, as you heard he's talking about growing up in lebanon and his the influence of his bola on the public mind in lebanon we're going to be right back don't go away stay tuned <laughs> 
And when we come back, if you'd like to participate in the conversation, you can call us at 212-769-1925, 212-769-1925. You want to email? Email is a wonderful way to have some of your questions answered. Zev at TalkLineNetwork.com, Zev at TalkLineNetwork.com. And yes, we are giving away some more tickets to the JCon Real Estate and Construction Conference. It's a rooftop intimate gathering on Tuesday night from uh, six to nine p.m. If you want to wear a pair, if you want a pair of tickets, keep sending me emails to zev at talklinenetwork.com. Put JCon in the byline and uh, give us your name, address, and zip code. And if you want to call us right now, two one two seven six nine nineteen twenty five. We're going to be right back. Don't go away. Stay tuned. You are listening to the Talkline Network here on WSNR 620 AM and TalklineNetwork.com. After so many wars and acts of terrorism, the people of Israel are at risk again. Israelis are living with constant danger, and many of us are at a loss as to how to help. But you can make a real difference by making a gift to support Magen David Dome. Israel's Ambulance and Blood Service. Your gift will provide urgently needed medical supplies, help Israel's Blood Services Center, and provide equipment to MDA's 25,000 volunteer EMTs. And when you support Magen David Dome, you're supporting one of the world's leading mass casualty trauma response organizations, so you know your gift will have an impact. Make a gift today and help save lives in Israel. Call 866-632-2763. That's 866-632-2763. Or visit American Friends of Magen Davida Dome at redstarforisrael.org. Save a life in Israel today. Hi, this is Zev Brennan. Invited to join me as I MC the Unity Concert, Solidarity with Israel. Am Yisrael Chai. Join us for a night of song, prayer, and solidarity with Israel on the occasion of the Yorts of Rav Shlomo Kabach of Blessed Memory. The concert featured Yehuda Green, Joey Newcomb, Shruli Williger. takes place with Toy Shabbos, October 28th, at the Westside Institutional Synagogue, 120 West 76th Street in Manhattan. Doors open at 8.30 p.m. Abdullah B'chaim Kiss at 9 p.m. $40 of purchase by early this week, if not $50 from Tuesday on. $50 at the door. VIP seating available at $125. Student pricing available for those under 25 with valid ID. For more information and to reserve, visit the org. Be there. Sponsored by Joey Fishman in memory of her son, Jonathan Stampler. <laughs> I know about MJHS Health System because I remember it was founded by the Brooklyn ladies like over 100 years ago. You remember that, but not our anniversary. Of course I remember. Oh, yeah? When is it? Yeah, it's coming up. Anyways, we first called MJHS because they're a not-for-profit, so you know they have your best interests in mind. His dad had MJHS home care, and when his health took a turn, we turned to them again. They explained hospice and guided us through everything. I can't tell you the peace of mind I got knowing that he was getting great care. And after my aunt's operation, she had rehab at an MJHS nursing home. They made the whole process easy on her and easy on us. She even chose their health plan. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. MJHS is there for you. August 7th. You remembered. How could I forget? For the support and guidance you need, call MJHS Health System today at 855-202-3502 or visit us at mjhs.org. MJHS, leading the way to great care. I'm Zaki Tamir, the managing partner at Tamir Marcus LLP, a boutique litigation firm in the heart of NYC. After serving New Yorkers for almost 20 years, I'm proud to join the team of experts at Cambridge Tax and Estate Corp. Cambridge is a New York not-for-profit corporation formed to educate the public about asset protection and the power of having a trust. To hear the secrets of estate planning and how to protect your family's financial legacy, join me live on the radio, call in with questions on my new show called Lawyer Up. It airs every Thursday night at 9.30 p.m. WSNR Radio, 6.20 a.m. dial. Live stream at brocklinenetwork.com. For a consultation about your estate planning, call 855 855- Get a will or online at getawill.nyc. 
You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner. Leah Hawila is our guest, the Lebanese Hassan. He grew up in Lebanon, discovered he was Jewish after he married a sore young lady in Brooklyn. And uh, he's uh, joining us uh, right now. Okay, let's take some phone calls. Let's go first. I believe we have David in Brooklyn. Go ahead, David in Brooklyn. Good about I'll say to everybody. Uh, I just want to say that I think it's probably better in this time's times to to, to just to use say garbage because the C R A P word could probably hurt hurt people's uh, ears. People are sensitive. Okay, uh, that's fine, uh, Leo. That's a good recommendation. You're right. You're right. You're right, David. Good You're work. Right. You're right. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. okay, let's let's take the next phone call. Okay. And let's go to Yosef in Brooklyn. Yosef in Brooklyn, are you there? Yosef, are you there? Well, let me get you off the hold button. Okay, we'll get you on the air. Okay. Yosef, go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead, Yosef. Hi. Hi. Uh, hello, Shavuato. So I have a question for your guest. Uh, it, I, I want to uh, explain. So, on one hand, uh, the Lebanon is uh, is a country that is in, enjoying good relations with the United States, uh, even I think getting American aid and even military aid. On the other hand, the Hezbollah is pretty much owns the Lebanon, which is Iran. How that two things, you know, can be squared? Good question. How do these things? How do these things fit together? Okay. Um, okay thank you okay now regardless of whether hezbollah controls lebanon or not part of the the united states uh mission mission statement in the world is we are the mother of freedom we help the entire we send aid to the entire world we support democracy lebanon is a democratic country on papers under its own constitution um it's a third world country as well and you know, like the U.S., I mean, the U.S. also helped Afghanistan, even even when Afghanistan was under the Taliban, right? The U.S. helped, uh, you know, helped other countries that were under the control of Al Qaeda. Um, I don't, I don't think it makes any difference whether Hez, whether Hezbollah controls Lebanon or not. Um, what I do think, though, is if America really wants to help Lebanon, America should start taking serious steps against the policies of Iran instead of sending six billion dollars from taxpayer money just to uh, show that America is good with diplomacy. Maybe, maybe no, we should we should start placing really harsh sanctions on Iran. And if we really we, we really want to do get away with placing these hard sanctions on Iran, maybe we should stop showing hostility to Russia and uh stop sending as using our taxpayer money to send weapons to ukraine and just show some friendship to russia maybe then russia would be more easy going with us uh being more being more harsh towards iran no they they, they have it, it wouldn't work uh, as far as with russia and russia has an agenda and by the way uh putin was supposedly a friend of israel and helpful but what he said in china this week about Israel and about the Putin is not a friend of Israel. P Putin is only a friend of himself. P Putin uh, only looks that's after correct. himself, right? That's correct. Okay. I that's mean, correct. if I mean, if 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 America wants to help the entire Middle East, if America really cares about Israel, America would put sanctions on Iran. And the only way America would get away with putting sanctions on Iran is by getting on Russia's good side. Nothing that's to do with. I have to say. Uh, the problem is with it goes beyond that. Aside from giving money, and there is. There is the, today's New York Post reports, and I don't have her name, of an Iranian woman who's part of the Iranian government who supports them, and she has she has security clearance from the Pentagon, which is outrageous, and she's been feeding information to Iran. She's connected to them over the years. That's been documented. And you also had another individual uh, who had security clearance that they quietly took it off in June, who also... Um, Robert Malley, who is, is certainly is pro-Iranian and who is part of the administration. So you have these things that, that are dangerous. Iran has sophisticated intelligence. And by the way, 
Um, and the reason why Hamas was successful in, in overcoming Israeli intelligence was because Iran helped them and Hezbollah helped them. Hezbollah, I read an article about three or four years ago how Hezbollah penetrated Israeli intelligence in Lebanon. They had the playbook, the troop movements. Obviously, they had, this goes back three or four years ago that, that they were able to have the troop movements. They have sophisticated information and capabilities thanks to Iran. So at the end of the day, Israel can fight the Hamas and they can fight his bullets. It's going to be hard to eradicate them. A hundred percent of the snake is Iran, and they're dangerous. And they, like other people, the proxies do the work. And they're very good to the last Palestinian. It's not them. They don't care about the Palestinians. They can, they can see as many of them killed as possible. The world doesn't talk about that. But that's really the facts of the case. The anyway, go ahead. <laughs> Adding to the facts of the case, yes, Iran helped Hamas, yes, Hezbollah helped Hamas, but if Zev, if we want to go down to the bottom of it, if we really want to tackle down, if we want to solve this problem and chase it at its root and amputate it, right, the problem has been the same for the past 75 years, right? And I, I call it, I refer to it with two words, I call it the delusional optimism. Right. It's approaching, approaching the East with the idea that we're coming with Western values. We're going to try to coexist with you. We're going to do everything to compromise, exchange, give you land, give you the benefit of the doubt. None of this has worked for the past 75 years. OK. And somehow right, right now, what happened two weeks ago, this is I think this is the most important inflection point over the past 75 years. And if the Israeli government does not act the right way, if the Israeli government wants to keep bowing down to the Western ideals that we have to be politically correct, we have to respect that there should be a two-state solution, we have to respect, no, that the Arabs deserve to exist here, no, that we have to give them the benefit of the doubt and hope for, for peace, this is not gonna happen, right? The West does not understand the East. Right, these people don't want to coexist. I'll show you something, Zev. This is Zman magazine, right? Uh -huh. The issue of April 2023. There's an interview in this in this uh, in this issue with Israeli journalist Israeli journalist Tzvi Yechazkili. I'm sure you've heard. Uh, have you have you heard of Tzvi? Not familiar with him, but go ahead. So, Tzvi Yechazkili speaks fluent Arabic. He's from Iraqi uh, Iraqi and Kurdish Jewish origins. Um, and he talks about one of one of the interviews that he did with Yasser Arafat following the second intifada, right? And he said that yeah, what Yasser Arafat said on camera was way different from what he said off camera. He said off camera, he spoke more openly. He was more honest about what the Palestinians and what the Arabs actually wanted, right? He told him, uh, he asked him, he's like, why did you launch the seventh, second intifada? Only because you got 93% of what you asked for. And then uh, Arafat answers him and says, you know what? Even 100% is not 100%. He's like, he, he said, Arafat, Arafat literally word for word said for Tzviya Khaskili that he will never ever sign an agreement that says end of conflict. And in fact, one of the guys that works directly with Arafat asked him, He's like, why did you sign uh, a, a, tr a treaty with the Jews? Do you know what he called it? He called it the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. That's in reference to a treaty that Muhammad made, uh, made 1,400 years ago. The Treaty of Hudaybiyah was made between Muhammad and his followers, who were one group, and Muhammad's family's tribe. Muhammad's family's tribe were pagans. Muhammad was trying to give them, uh, you know, monotheistic ideas and they didn't agree. So they kicked him out. So then he came so apologetically and said, you know what, let's make a treaty. Let's coexist with each other. Let me live amongst you and I'm going to stop uh, doing my missionary work here. I said, okay, fine, no problem. So Muhammad lived amongst them for 10 years and his family, his tribe thought that, that they were living in peace. And during those 10 years, what was he doing? He was gathering weapons gathering all support from uh, from under the table. And then when the right moment came, he struck them back and butchered them. And this, 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 is, this is what Arafat was, was telling Tzvi Khaskili that every single time we, uh, we agree to something with the Oslo Accords, whether, you know, uh, giving back Gaza, they're not actually looking for peace. 
right? That time of quiet, that, that little period of quiet between each and every single uh, separate conflict, this is the time when they're sitting down and planning the next attack, the next, the next movement of terror. And this is, a, this is the chance now. If and by the way, you're absolutely correct, because if you analyze what Hamas has been doing, they've been lulling Israel and to say Israel was concentrating more in Judea and Samaria as opposed mm -hmm. to Gaza. They felt the things were quiet, that they, Hamas was not going to openly provoke a war. Yes, there'll be some rocket attacks, but nothing major. But that was done purposely. Hamas has said that, that they did it purposely to lull the Israelis. And each time there was a truce, there was a cessation of hostilities. They used it to plan ahead, which is what culminated. Like, in exactly. And this, this delusional optimism that I'm talking about and the naive, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to refer to it as that, but the naiveness of a lot of the politicians, left-wing politicians in the Israeli government that, no, we're going to keep some land, we're going to try to keep the status quo. The status quo is what led to the massacre that happened two weeks ago. How many Jewish lives have to be lost until they understand that there is no road to peace with these people, right? Right now, if the IDF, the solution to this problem, the IDF should enter Gaza, there should be a ground invasion, it, the IDF should wipe out Hamas, and I'm sorry to say it, and it's so politically incorrect, I don't care, I don't, I don't care, I'm, I'm, I'm not a people pleaser, the Gazans should not stay there. They should be kicked out. I'm sorry, they should, this, this is the truth. They should be kicked out, thrown into the Sinai, thrown into, a, I don't care where, but if they stay there, if the IDF enter, if we invade Gaza and the, and the Palestinians stay there, Gaza is only going to turn into another West Bank. Well, the thing is that gets me when I hear these demonstrations in the United States, you know, from the river to the sea, you know, Palestine will be free. What that means is calling for the destruction of Israel because they want nothing, nothing Jewish in between the river and the sea. Exactly. And, exactly. And exactly. I'll, I'll tell you something. There's when, when when people refer to war to conflict. Sometimes you know you can refer to it as a war, as a disputed land. You know, uh, like uh, uh, for instance, Russia and Ukraine fighting fighting over the area of Donetsk, right? Fine. That's that that's a conflict. That's a that's a conflict based off of disputed land, right? What happened? But but how, what is the terminology used to describe the Israeli-Palestinian or Israeli-Arab conflict? How do they refer to it? They refer to it as the Palestinian cause. When you have a conflict built over the foundation of ideology and religion, it's much more it's much harder to make peace than when it's built on something else. Take take the Nazis for example, right? The the, the war with the Nazis was built off of ideology. What was the only solution? The only solution was to wipe them out. Was there any chance to make peace with the Nazis? No, we had to wipe them out. This, the same exact way right now, we have, we have to wipe out Hamas. And then we, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say it, but we have to kick out whatever Arab population that lives there. But the world would not allow, and that's the problem. There are going to be breaks put on. Let's go to- I don't care. I know, but Zeb, you're not running the Israeli Zeb, government. Zeb, I, I already, reg regardless. As it is, as it is, we are being blamed. We are being called baby killers. We, are, we, are, we're the victim. I follow. I follow the Arab media. I analyze what they say. Right now, they're referring to it as al adwan al Israeli or Israel Isra in Arabic, which is Israeli aggression or Israeli assault. Are you kidding me? You attacked us first. You came in. You butchered 1,400 people, raped women, kidnapped women and children, and you say that you're the victim. You have the chutzpah. To go out and say it's it's an Israeli assault. Let's hear what Tim and Tim and Queens. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. Um, yeah. I just want to make a point on your guest's uh, comment about delusional optimism. I couldn't agree more. I think it's uh, very eloquently said. Um, the West, I think, has had this delusional optimism for a long time. Remember on 9-11, they, they danced in the streets uh, in the Palestinian territories when those towers came down. They celebrated mm -hmm. and they continue to celebrate. And let's remember that in the 22 years since 9-11, the optimists, the delusional optimists on the left have told us that Islam is really a religion of peace that Muslims mostly want Israel to live peacefully, that we just have to get along. And if we dare to challenge that narrative, we are called bigots, we are called Islamophobic, we are called hate, you know, it's labeled as so-called hate speech. 
usually it's well-meaning liberals, usually white liberals uh, uh, in, in Western countries who have this mentality and they just don't get it. So I couldn't agree more. I think the loser exactly. is they, perfectly for, for what you said. America, America and the white, I will call it the white West, feel that the, 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 enti the entire world is obligated to follow in their lead. It's, 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 it's part of this American arrogance that why, why, why are we letting the Palestinians stay? Why, why are we still giving up, giving up land and, and compromising? Oh, because we have to be apologetic. Oh, because we have to be tolerant. Why do we have to do that? Even though we know they want to butcher us every time they have the chance, because America said so, because America wants that, because this is the new political correctness. Oh, why do now Israelis put pronouns in their LinkedIn profiles. Oh, because we follow the lead in what America says. This American arrogance has to go away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The West does not understand the East. The West does not understand the East. The That's more, the, 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 they the more how it works. They, they think everybody thinks the same way they do in the exactly, West. Exactly. Exactly. And, 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 and the they do not. They do not okay. understand that these people are born get out of their mother's tummy with the ideology of Jew hatred embedded in their blood. They don't, they don't understand this. Tim, what do you want and, to add? Just, just, yeah, I just want to add really quickly. It's not just, this is not just Israel versus Hamas or Israel versus Iran. This is the entire civilized world versus radical Islam. And until we understand that, it's, it's, it's America, it's Great Britain, it's Canada, it's Australia, it's, it's, of course, Israel. It's the entire civilized world versus radical Islam because we are, the, we are targets also. They, they say death to Israel, and in the same sentence, they say death to America. Death to so America. We, we, better, we better wake up. We better wake up. On camera, on camera, they say, oh, America's amazing. Send us aid. We love you. We love you. Off camera, they call for the death of America, right? The, these people, I'll tell you something. If anyone has ever watched Star Trek, you know how I, I would describe the Palestinians? Do you know the, the Ferengis? They're, no, they're, they're like this breed of aliens who are known as like the, sne the, the, sne the sneaky people who just sit down to rob, every, to, to rob everyone out of their money and uh, get by. This is how they are. The amount of money that the Palestinians have robbed out of the entire world, out of the out of the Middle East, out of the UN, out of the Western countries, with that amount of money, they could have been one of the most advanced countries today. Well, no yeah. one, no one has received well, Arab, as much Arab, money as the Palestinians have Arab. received. It's a corrupt. Listen, everybody knows the Palestinian Authority is extremely corrupt, and you have Sua Arafat who has hundreds of millions of dollars which she never gave back, which her Husband Yasser Arafat uh, took from the, the Palestinian. Had they invested in the Palestinian? Look at Hamas. Had they taken the money and the resources they've gotten from Qatar and other countries over the years, and instead of building tunnels that are 300 miles underneath Gaza, and instead of building rockets and invested in the economy and invested in the people, Gaza would be a much more affluent place than it is today. And. and and the problem is that left-wing Jews, apologetic Jews within the Israeli government and the Israeli media and in, in wicked, corrupted news outlets like Haaretz, do, 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 do not believe in that, right? To them, well, oh, I, I have... Right I now have Israel has changed. Israel has changed. I think now Israel speaking yeah, in one of voice. Course, if, of course, and if, 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 if people like the Haaretz crowd don't change, then they're, they're a bunch of morons. But I have to say, I, I don't care. I don't care if you have... 10 beautiful, amazing, bubbly Arab friends from, uh, you know, with Israeli citizenship who live inside Israel. I don't care if you know a few good Arabs uh, inside Gaza or a few Arab, a few good Arabs inside the West Bank who gave you some water when you were thirsty. And I, that doesn't matter to me. Bottom line is the majority of those people who live within the Gaza borders want to wipe us out. They want to butcher Jews. They say it unapologetically. They, they went and celebrated on the streets two weeks ago when 1,400 Jews were butchered. If we want to sit down and go with the same delusion that we've been going with for the past 75 years, this is never going to end. This is the most important inflection point. If we don't go in and kick them out, I don't care what happens to them. I'm sorry. I don't care what happens. The world is going to blame Israel anyway, so let's just go with it and save ourselves. Well. I don't care. You know, what, what, are, what are we going to do? Oh, some good Arabs live inside Gaza. So let's make a, like an app on the phone. Go If you're a good Arab, go and register yourself so that we can put you on the side and keep you in instead of kicking you out. What's the, what's the practical solution there? 
And the practical solution, though, is you're going to see that the world will not let Israel do what it wants to do in Gaza. They're going to be restraints put on Israel. And that's the problem. That's the problem. When we sit down and bow down to what the West wants, to what America wants, we keep going back to the same trap. We the gave back Gaza. Is, we did the Israel? Oslo Accords. When is this going to end? How many more Jews have to die and, and until we understand that we have to take serious action? It's not an easy task to get rid of Hamas, and Israel will unfortunately have casualties going in, and that's why they're waiting. But President Biden has said, and, there, and it's been reported on CNN and the media, so I'm not saying anything that's not been reported, is that the, the president wants to put restraints on what Israel can do in Gaza. The world community wants to do so. And the, you, it's it's you happening go. before Israel's gone there in. There you go. So you're going to see that. Ali Hawila is our guest for a little while longer. He's the Lebanese husband. You remember, we had him on over a year and a half ago when he married a Syrian young lady from Brooklyn. He didn't know he was Jewish. They separated, discovered he was Jewish. His mother's Jewish, grandmother's Jewish. And now he's trying to make Aliyah to Israel. He grew up in Lebanon. He knows the Shiite theology and philosophy we're going to and be right in the back. process of shiduchim as well so if you have a good suggestion for me, please let me know <laughs> we're happy to to, to 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 be the matchmaker 212-769-1925 is a number 212-769-1925 you want to email zebrenner at gmail.com zebrenner at gmail.com getting some emails from lakewood and elsewhere about the jcon conference if you want a pair of tickets we'll still give away some more tickets to the jcon conference please send me an email to zeb at talklinenetwork.com put jcon in the bottle and give us your name address and zip code we're giving away some more bunch more tickets a pair of tickets to the jcon event tuesday night in manhattan we'll be right back I know about MJHS Health System because I remember it was founded by the Brooklyn ladies like over a hundred years ago. You remember that, but not our anniversary. Of course I remember. Oh yeah? When is it? Yeah, it's coming up. Anyways, we first called MJHS because they're a not-for-profit, so you know they have your best interests in mind. His dad had MJHS home care, and when his health took a turn, we turned to them again. They explained hospice and guided us through everything. I can't tell you the peace of mind I got knowing that he was getting great care. And after my aunt's operation, she had rehab at an MJHS nursing home. They made the whole process easy on her and easy on us. She even chose their health plan. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. MJHS is there for you. August 7th. You remembered. How could I forget? For the support and guidance you need, call MJHS Health System today at 855-202-3502 or visit us at MJHS.org. MJHS, leading the way to great care. Hi, this is Zev Brenner inviting you to join me as I MC the Unity Concert, Solidarity with Israel. Am Yisrael Chai. Join us for a night of song, prayer, and solidarity with Israel on the occasion of the Yorts of Rav Shlomo Kabach of Blessed Memory. The concert features Yehuda Green, Joey Newcomb, Shruli Williger. Takes place with Toy Shabbos, October 28th at the Westside Institutional Synagogue, 120 West 76th Street in Manhattan. Doors open at 8.30 p.m. Abdullah B'chaim Kiss at 9 p.m. $40 of purchase by early this week, if not $50 from Tuesday on. $50 at the door. VIP seating available at $125. Student pricing available for those under 25 with valid ID. For more information and to reserve, visit the thekalbachshul.org. Be there, sponsored by Joey Fishman in memory of her son, Jonathan Stampler. After so many wars and acts of terrorism, the people of Israel are at risk again. Israelis are living with constant danger, and many of us are at a loss as to how to help. But you can make a real difference by making a gift to support Magen David Adom, Israel's ambulance and blood service. Your gift will provide urgently needed medical supplies, help Israel's blood services center, and provide equipment to MDA's 25,000 volunteer EMTs. And when you support Magen David Adom, you're supporting one of the world's leading mass casualty trauma response organizations, so you know your gift will have an impact. Make a gift today and help save lives in Israel. Call 866-632-2763. That's 866-632-2763. Or visit American Friends of Magen Davida Dome at redstarforisrael.org. Save a life in Israel today.
I'm Zaki Tamir, the managing partner at Tamir Marcus LLP, a boutique litigation firm in the heart of NYC. After serving New Yorkers for almost 20 years, I'm proud to join the team of experts at Cambridge Tax and Estate Corp. Cambridge is a New York not-for-profit corporation formed to educate the public about asset protection and the power of having a trust. To hear the secrets of estate planning and how to protect your family's financial legacy, join me live on the radio, call in with questions on my new show called Lawyer Up. It airs every Thursday night at 9.30 p.m. WSNR Radio, 6.20 a.m. dial. Live stream at talklinenetwork.com. For a consultation about your estate planning, call 855 855- Get a will or online at getawill.nyc. Thank you for listening to this During episode of Chai Lifeline presents the following helpful tips. For more Israel crisis and trauma resources, visit chilifeline.org slash Israel. Here now is Rabbi Surly Free, director of Chai Lifeline of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, on how to address the war images children may see. As we stare at the images coming out of Eretz Israel with utter horror, shock, and disbelief, we ask ourselves the impact it will have on our children. One, it's been demonstrated to impact children negatively. Two, if they did see, don't dismiss it, rather address it with them. Three, encourage them to get their information about the war from you. May we continue to daven for Achinu B'nai Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael. Fine with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Please call us with your questions and comments at 212-769-1925. That's 212-769-1925, or email us at zevbrenner at gmail.com. Aaron back, our final search with Leah Hawila. He grew up in Lebanon. He knows the Shiite culture, knows some of what's happening in the Arab press. Let's take Razi in Brooklyn. Your question for our guest. Go ahead, Razi. I don't have a question. Just want to congratulate him. He is amazing, so intelligent. And how is his English so well? He's really in America for six, seven years, from what I understand. And he's amazing. His knowledge and the way he puts it on and his uh, re- uh, religion, his betochen is just amazing. And uh, I hear that he's looking for, shid- for Shidduch. Yes, he is. You have somebody for him? So, so you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be speaking to some friends who are going to this circle. But he really, really deserves all my respect. For me and a whole group of friends who are listening, it is really amazing. I wish him a lot, a lot of Hatzlacha. Thank, Thank you so you. much. What, what kind of young lady are you looking for? Sephardic. <laughs> Sephardic, okay. <laughs> in, line with, in, in line with your... Yeah, this your... would be appropriate. I, I, I can go with Ashkenaz as well, if they cook good Sephardi food. <laughs> 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 no, the most important thing is we don't have hot and we don't have hot and, uh, you know, live, 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 living with Avodat Hashem and the Derech of Torah. That's the most important thing. How did he get so much into the Chatera? The way he was educated, he sounds like a educated yeshiva bacher. You know? Well, maybe no, I'm, 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 re- I'm really heated up. I, I really, I really can't, you know, can't stand watching watching things go out of control anymore. And uh, we're, still, we're still, I'm also very, I'm very riled up also with what's going on. I think Israel was much too mellow all these years, just listening to the West, and because that, because of the West, America is telling them that, and this one is telling them that. That's why. How could they have let it happen in the first place is beyond me. They were just sleeping sleeping at the wheel. I don't understand. Such a border, such a dangerous border. I actually visited the lot a few years ago. Such a dangerous border. I couldn't wait to get out because I didn't see any soldiers around me. I mean, where were they? Could they not? Forget about the intelligence. You have the Mossad, you have the Shane Beth, and you couldn't find out a clue. Of what's going on? This is just beyond, beyond me. And, what and what's, and what's even more dangerous is that they live amongst us here in Brooklyn. The, the, earlier, I saw on Yeshiva World they posted that uh, in uh, Bay Ridge there were a few arrests. They they had they had an anti-Israel protest. I'm like, did they still have the chutzpah to go out on the streets of Brooklyn? Like, uh, like, are you kidding me? And sure, sure. And, and by the way, I'm part of us. And part of that protest in Brooklyn showed a notorious character boy with payas wearing a Palestinian flag, and I think and, and yeah, a, Erev Rav. Erev Rav. a few crazy people, just totally crazy people, Erev Rav, just like you said. They don't know what they're talking about. 
you know, and they keep on saying the occupied territories. I think these Arabs who live in the so-called quote-unquote occupied ter territories. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And the one at a time, one at a time. One at a time. Occupation from Israel, then they would live in their own countries. One second, occupied second, territory. Uh, Leah, hold on, let Brazy finish. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. go ahead, Brazy. I'm saying that I passed by through those territories. I went with a special group of Americans for safe Israel. And we went the lots of those occupied quote unquote territory. They live they are peaceful villages. They come and they go whenever they want. Even though it's written in some entrances, be careful, don't go in there, or you can get killed when you go into an Arab village. But they're all on their own. Nobody bothers them. I didn't see a single Israeli police officer or not even soldiers in all these villages, what they call occupied territories. I'm seeing them even happy to live on the Israeli um, rule. Uh, you know, and they keep on saying they occupy territories and they're being discriminated. They're discriminated on what? I went to Rukhav Yafa, I was sitting in the cafes. I saw them sitting in all the Jewish cafes and having coffee and cake and pizza and whatever. And nobody discriminates them. And how many Arabs do we take in every day? Passing through Jordan, coming to help build all these beautiful buildings and they're getting paid, they're getting salaries. We're actually doing them a favor. So what are they co co talking about? The occupied territories about discrimination? Crazy, crazy. Just, know. just so you know. Just so you know, a, a lot of these, a lot of these Arabs that cross from Judea and Samaria and Jordan, they have been getting investigated over the past two weeks by the Shabak. Almost ninety-nine percent of them were found to have given intel to Hamas and helped this operation wow. happen. Uh, this massacre wow. happened. Where, where did you see that, Aliyah? Someone, someone posted it on Twitter. Some, uh, a source of the Shabak. I, I think Avi something. I forgot his last name, but I saw that the Shabak is actually investigating the Arab workers, and they found out that they were giving intel to Hamas. Amazing, unbelievable. We're still keeping them. And by we're the way, them. They, them did them a, they, they have the freedom, everything. They and did the a they, of occupied territories being discriminated about what? The where, yeah. where in the world? Where in the world do you find a country giving water and food to its enemies? Where in the world do you find a country giving its enemies work permits to come, to, to come and where? where other than Israel? Israel has been exactly. dropping leaflets in Gaza and making phone calls to let them mm -hmm. know Israel that no other army in the world does. Well, but what exactly. I find interesting, by the way, both Razi and Leah, is they did a poll a number of years ago about Jerusalem residents, the Arab residents of Jerusalem, and they asked them, they have Israeli citizens, would they give it up so they can live in a Palestinian area if they would take over? I think 70-80% wouldn't want to live in the Palestinian area, they want to live in That's Israel. That's what I'm saying, that they called it occupied territories. I think they're more happy to live in the Israeli rule than they would live under their own rule, killing each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Besides no the question. point, why is it occupied? Who attacked first? You're talking about the territories after uh, after the 67 war? Even you know, more than first, the attack first. To defend ourselves. I just want to tell you something, crazy. And we were very happy. We were very happy with the 48, with the 48 war and the way it was set up then. Then came the, the Yom Kippur war and the Sinai war. They kept on attacking us. We had no choice. 67 uh, walking, we had no choice. We had to take in those territories so we can have a uh, border to defend ourselves. Raise it just so one second. 67, so why did they attack us? They didn't have occupied territories till 67. So why did they attack us from all sides? A, a, few, th a few things that I, I just want to point to out. Me that. There was no answer. Okay, was okay. No let, answer. And we're going to let the Leah finish and we're going to move on. Just, yes, go just, ahead. Just, just one second, Raise. One, one thing I want to point out. Um, even... It, it's not it's not a matter of only attack first right when you sit down and say oh it's israeli occupation right and your religion your your people have invaded almost all of the middle eastern countries and north african countries right 1400 years ago to spread islam right that that, that was not occupation right that, that that was that was that was just a walk in the park that was just a spreading god's word but when we, when when the Jews came back, when when we came back to take our land, that's considered occupation. But when they butchered millions of people, right, from the Atlantic until uh, until God knows where, back in the east, that that was not that was not occupation. And by the way, so also 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 another thing that Razi mentioned. Um, uh, she said after 1948, who said who said we were at peace with the Arabs before 1948? Does anyone know about the pogrom of 1929 in Hebron? Hebron, Hebron. Mm -hmm. so, uh, 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 we were looking to make a known country. We came there because we didn't have where to go after the Holocaust. My parents moved. There. We didn't have where to go. They didn't want to look sit in Europe one more day after what happened to the 
to the Jews, eh, to the parents. So they came to sit in Israel. They didn't come to make a Medina. They come, basically, they came, everybody came, they didn't have where to go. Okay. And then they were doing so much terror. My father was in the streets. They were beating him up. They were stealing his car. They were doing whatever they want. They didn't have a life to do so kinder. They had no choice than to make a Medina. He was just pushed into it. They weren't even so, coming with the idea of making so, it. So, so the, the solution is, the solution is after 75 years of repeating the same stupid mistake over and over and over again, it's time to take serious action. Even if, even, the solution is go in, kick them out. Apartheid, God bless apartheid. I'm, well, I'm, 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 I'm a realist. The world will not allow it. I'm just telling you, Aliyah, I don't care if the country. world allows it or not. Okay, anyway, but, but anyway, right anyway, anyway they they are, right? okay. If, 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 if they want to label it, it's, 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 it's segregation for the purpose of peace. They want to call it apartheid. God bless apartheid. I love apartheid. I'm going to celebrate know, apartheid on the street. If, if apartheid means me staying alive, then yes, I will do apartheid to stay alive. The problem is, is, that, is the problem is, is that Israel's hands is unfortunately going to be tied in any Gaza incursion, even though that... that exactly. That's the before. problem that's, I've that's been talking problem. about for the past half an and, hour. And this is what needs to change. As Israel is, and they're, they're getting, and thank God America helped Iron Dome and is providing weapons, but if they're providing weaponry, okay. they're going to have a say, and that's the that's part no, of it. No, well, I'll tell you something, Zev. America will never ever give up on Israel. Joe Biden himself says said. Uh, I think everyone saw this video. He said, even if we, even if there was no Israel, America would have to create an Israel to protect its interests in the Middle East. So, I'm sorry, but. The Israelis need to shape up a little bit. The Israeli government needs to get get gain gain some some, some muscle a, a little bit and stand up to, to to America imposing its opinions on us. Enough is enough. You know, I'm, Amer 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 America Amer America is not going to give up on Israel. America they won't, uh, won't be, but they will try to put restraints on Israel. I'm, I'm just they, they won't. Right they won't. They they won't. They, it's starting to happen right now. Anyway, Aliyah Hawila, former Lebanese Hassan, we appreciate you being here with us, and keep. We'll try to get you a shidduch. We'll we'll do live matchmaking on the air and get you a match. So anybody who wants to uh, help Aliyah in his uh, quest for marriage, just uh, send me an email to zev at talklinenetwork.com, and we'll definitely pass it on to Aliyah. And uh, Aliyah, you're in the process of making Aliyah, correct? Yes. Yeah. I'm, uh, it's, 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 it's taking, it's taking some extra time right now because of the war, but Bezrat Hashem, you know, give it like two, three months and, uh, I'm going to be back. Good. Always nice to have you on the air. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you for having me, Seb. My pleasure. We look forward to having you back. Aliyah Hawila, the Lebanese Hassan here on the Talk Line Network. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, when we come back, 